Technology has had a major impact on education in the past few years. So for this presentation, we're just going to look at how technology has influenced interaction in the classroom, engagement, having quick access to information, flipping the classroom, accountability, and using electronic resources. So Sir Peter Blake said that new technology is common, new thinking is rare, which is really true. When students are on the computer, there's less likelihood of independent thinking. So something to think about on the side. So looking at interaction, when we look at the programs and websites that students use, there's a lot of opportunity for them to interact with each other, not only locally, but also globally. Technology allows students to access information and facts and also connect with other people and create a community of learners. So when students are looking at how to do that, we really need to give them the opportunity to learn from each other as much as we can. Unfortunately, Khan Academy doesn't really provide a lot of opportunities for interaction with peers. The only interaction that really happens is between students and their coaches. When students complete exercises, they're able to provide feed or gain feedback from their coaches in that sense. So that's just one of the downsides of Khan Academy. Looking at student engagement, however, Students typically get excited when they're able to use a tablet or a computer for a lesson. And Khan Academy provides students not only with access to an electronic device, but they do get badges and rewards and things like that. So positive reinforcement for completing their exercises. And typically when students are engaged and interested, there's going to be an increase in productivity, and again, that can be seen in Khan Academy. There's a lot of opportunity for practice, so students are more likely to continue on with their studies and progressing through the lessons. So a, a seventh grade teacher said that it's been an amazing difference in behavior and attitudes. These are students who avoided math at all costs, avoided even eye contact, and they now have the resources and tools to understand. They're motivated and empowered. And there's a lot of teachers who have similar feedback. Additionally, students have really quick access to information these days, and the Khan Academy is no exception. Their videos are easily accessible. They are free, very straightforward, and they're very short, which is nice. So students have quick access to information on specific topics that they're looking for when they're using Khan Academy, which is a, a big benefit in the classroom. Keith Kruger said, though, that it's important to remember that educational software, like textbooks, is only one tool in the learning process. Neither can be a substitute for well-trained teachers, leadership, and parental involvement. So when students are using Khan Academy, it's important to remember that that's not replacing teaching. Another major trend has been the flipped classroom. So, and I don't see that trend going away anytime soon, but basically class time has become more efficient in those classrooms where students are able to provide feedback after watching these videos, either at home or before class. So Khan Academy has really jumped on board with the flipped classroom. Sal Khan, the founder of Khan Academy, once uh, said that he wanted to create a library of internal videos that captures the Khan approach to every imaginable challenge. So the idea is to mimic the flipped classroom he also said that Khan Academy's presentation of material through video allows teachers to assign students videos that introduce or review content at home. Again, flipped classroom. So this can help limit lecture time. And additionally, with digital lessons in the form of video and exercises, Khan Academy is determined to transform how students learn at every level. So students get to really navigate at their own pace. So looking at accountability, Khan is great. Khan Academy allows students to track and record their progress. 
coaches can then see which videos students watched for how long and then also see which exercise problems they practiced and then Khan produces a report showing student progress where teachers and students can either discuss the progress or just review what needs to be covered again. So it allows students specifically to identify what topics they need to master and go back and review. So this is just a sample report, but really it's helpful for students to see the organization of the topics they've covered already and what they need to go back and review. So Khan Academy has become global there's no doubt that these numbers are going to change on the next slide. But really you can see Egypt, Finland, there are translations available over 36 languages and I'm sure that will also increase. The Khan Academy is continuing to grow. So that tells me as an educator that it's a good resource. So over 5,000 videos available. Um, over 10 million people visit Khan Academy each month. Over 500 million videos are viewed, um, and I believe that's monthly. And over 4 million exercises are completed each day. And again, this number has changed, I'm sure, since today. But over 27 million people have subscribed to Khan and joined the Khan Academy family. So looking at devices, real quick, Khan Academy is available online. So whether you're using a computer, a Chromebook, or an iPad, you're going to have access to those free lessons. And the iPad app has just been revised this year, 2015, so there's a lot of new features. I have the old app, so once it was updated, there were a lot of different features that were really helpful. They are working on a mobile app for Khan Academy that hasn't been released yet, but they know that that's the next step as far as availability goes. But ultimately, Khan Academy realizes that providing those different devices will help students learn at their own pace, at their own time, which is ultimately the goal. So just to finish up, this is just a quick testimony from a teacher on how he uses Khan Academy in his classroom. It's just a minute long, um, but it's just a good way to end on how Khan Academy has been used in the classroom. Hi, my name is Tal Steiner. Uh, I implemented Khan Academy in my classroom in Philadelphia for two years. I was teaching both ninth graders and 12th graders math through the Teach for America program. And Khan Academy far surpassed my expectations of what it could uh, bring to my classroom to benefit both myself and my students. When I was when I was first implementing the the, the you utilizing the computers in my classroom, uh, it, it took some time to get both myself comfortable and the students comfortable. That didn't happen overnight, but I remember about two months in, I, I just was working with uh, about five students, five advanced students on stuff that really we couldn't otherwise be working on if the entire class was working together because the other students wouldn't have been comfortable with it. And I remember working with these five students and on the side there were two other students sort of helping each other and in the back there were 10 students on the computer just working on things at their own level and I, I just remember having this incredible moment of every single student in my classroom is learning right now. And, and after that, I really felt like those moments happened more and more frequently. So thank you, Khan Academy. It's, it's been great. So really the reality with Khan Academy is it's not for everyone and it's not for every subject. But again, it's a benefit, it's a resource, it's helpful in a lot of different aspects and something to look at in your classroom or at home for students to really take advantage of.